Welcome back. We want to get you up to speed on a new trial going on in San Diego just getting underway today. It is the Lover Stalker murder trial. Jesse Alvarez is facing life in prison without the possibility of parole. If he's convicted of murder with a special circumstance, allegations of lying in wait. Now, Alvarez is accused in the shooting death of teacher Mario Fierro, who was engaged to a woman who had dated Alvarez more than three years prior. Scripps News San Diego has a look at the case and what was learned during a preliminary hearing ahead of the trial's start. On February 1st of last year, beloved Cathedral Catholic High School teacher Mario Fierro was shot and killed outside of his home in North Park. Audio played in court captures what investigators say are seven loud bangs consistent with gunshots from that morning. one year old Jesse Alvarez seen here during his preliminary hearing Wednesday is accused of the murder. His ex-girlfriend was engaged to Fierro. Alvarez's mother testified that he was heartbroken over their 2019 breakup. She said she tried to help him move on by bringing him to live with her in Rancho Cucamonga. But he later moved back to San Diego and in with his brother. Did you tell Jesse to move on from Amy? Uh, of course, I was happy for her. She testified that she was aware he had two guns and was taking shooting classes, but was not concerned. Earlier in the day, an investigator said that Alvarez asked a shooting instructor at a gun range disturbing questions prior to Fierro's death. Mr. Vaz told me that during the break, Mr. Alvarez came up to him and said, or asked, quote, where's the best place to shoot someone to kill them? Quote, what about the back of the head, unquote? Fierro's fiance also unsuccessfully tried to obtain a domestic violence restraining order against Alvarez shortly after their breakup. She also said she most feared for her safety when he was able to get hired at Cathedral Catholic, where she and Fierro worked. He had obtained a job in the food provider on campus, and he was asked to leave as soon as he was identified. Now, the victim's fiance, Amy Gimbara, took the stand today. She told the jury about being forced to move because the defendant was allegedly stalking her. Shortly after I saw that the defendant attempted to get into my apartment, I knew that I didn't feel safe because I told him no. So I ended up moving to another apartment and that was, it was not something that I shared publicly with people about that moving and I felt safer by being in a spot that was a new, it was a new location. Now, starting tomorrow here on Court TV, we will take you inside the courtroom for more testimony in this fascinating trial. Actually, very sad trial as well. Joining us to discuss criminal defense and civil attorney Jesse Lal and trial attorney and former president of the National Bar Association, C.K. Hoffler. C.K., I'll start with you. And, you know, just I said a very sad trial as well. And by, yes. by that, I mean, you know, we're seeing so many cases where these women, that they're, they're helpless in these situations. Uh, you heard her testimony. You could feel the pain, the, the, the fear that goes along with this type of thing. Your thoughts? Well, certainly, you know, being stalked, I can only imagine mm -hmm. the kind of terror that you can feel as a woman. You're, you're completely helpless and hopeless. And even when you do get a restraining order, it's my understanding, you know, a lot of times the person has to do actual harm before mm -hmm. law enforcement steps in and does something. And when something like this happens, her greatest fear, her worst nightmare, she will always forever feel some kind of regret that maybe she should have done something more or something different. She did what she felt was appropriate to protect herself yes. and to protect her fiance, but it just wasn't enough because he was determined yeah. to get her back one way or the other or to prevent someone else from getting her. So it's, it's, it's a tragedy, it's sad, Michael, but it is a reflection of feeling hopeless and helpless and also feeling that the law doesn't really protect you until something devastating happens. Yeah.
And I think you're absolutely right because in this case, we talk about restraining orders. Let's talk, Jesse. Mm -hmm. She tried to get a restraining order. She went in, brought in evidence that he repeatedly tried to contact her. He was cyber stalking her. He tried breaking into her apartment. Things escalated over time. Yet the judge denied her getting a restraining order saying she didn't meet the burden of proof under the Domestic Violence Protection Act. Look, I don't know the specifics of that case, but this is the way I understand it went. What do you have to do to get a restraining order? Nothing more than what you've just presented. That was more than ample evidence, unless there was something technical or procedural, like he wasn't served or she didn't appear in court. I have no idea what happened to that. Yeah. But based on what you've just listed, that is enough to get anyone a protective order, even in the context of domestic violence or a dating, stalking, violence situation like what they had. Yeah. Uh, I'm really surprised that um, there wasn't a protective order issued. It's a situation where you try to anticipate or speculate. You don't want to be in a position, or any judge wants to be in a position and say, 2020 is hindsight. Mm -hmm. I mean, based on what you just listed, you had more than 2020 in hindsight to say, this woman needs to be protected and there needs to be a barrier between her and the defendant. Yeah, and if you told me this was the year 2000, oh, yeah. maybe I'd say, okay, I understand. We didn't have the enlightened sense that we have these days, but this was 2022. Gotta do better than this, mm -hmm. gotta do better.